Daniels. That's David. deep into opposition territory Smith, one of the more regular suspects Smith Richie and beyond Walker Pew Pew that'll do it that will do it Pew for Bournemouth Hello Cherries fans, hope you're doing well on this Tuesday. We said happy Monday to you sarcastically on yesterday's second look and we're just saying good morning to you today because there's a mixture of emotions but a bit of surprise and also some conjecture about the reasons why Scott Parker has left AFC Bournemouth. It was announced on the club website and via the socials this morning that they announced that they've parted company with him. The owner, Maxim Demin, said, I would like to place on record my gratitude to Scott and his team for their efforts during their time with us. Our promotion back to the Premier League last season under his tenure will always be remembered as one of the most successful seasons in our history. However, in order for us to keep progressing as a team and a club as a whole, it's unconditional that we are aligned in our strategy to run the club sustainably. Something that we hinted at on our second look are their mixed messages between the board and the head coach. He goes on to say, we must also show belief in and respect for one another. That's the approach that has brought this club so much success in recent history and one that we will not veer from now. Our search for a new head coach will begin immediately. So there you go. That was the reaction. I'm joined by uh, Tiggs today. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, mate. It's very formal, sir. I think we'll be on that now, aren't we? I think so. Hello, mate. Yeah. We've also got Jeff Hayward here as well. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? You right? Yeah. <laughs> A bit shell-shocked, to quote Parker. <laughs> well done. You know what, though? Shell shocked, but also not shell shocked. Tiggs, it was, it was becoming a fraught relationship even before the season began, and it seems to have culminated now in him leaving the club. It doesn't say how he's left the club. We'll um, we'll wait for more sound bites and maybe get some media reaction. Look on this show, we've got your comments. We'll make it a free for all later on. Also, we're hoping to get some media expertise based on. Uh, some messages that we've sent out, hoping to find out exactly what happened. But uh, yeah, 24 hours ago, Tiggs, we were talking and uh, there was um, a fair bit of criticism for Parker, wasn't there? Yeah, and, and you know, um, we, we were talking about mixed messages and uh, it would seem to me from, from the statement today that actually there weren't really no mixed messages in terms of what Scott Parker's been told is... is the aim of this football club and, and what we're trying to achieve and how we're going to try and achieve that. But I think really for me, uh, he's probably a little bit of a chancer. He probably took the job on expecting uh, certain things or probably they probably told him that he wouldn't get certain things, but he thought I'll take the job on. And if I get him up to the Premier League, they might start giving me stuff. So uh, that's my kind of overwhelming feeling about how he's, how he's got on. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting to, to hear what other people have to say as the day goes on and what comes out of the club going forward. Mm, absolutely just reconnected there so yeah we've got some chats coming in and look we'll display select chats on screen and we'll also put the chat pane on the right hand side already people are talking Jeff about who could be next but we're not going to broach those conversations just yet because probably probably now's not the time but um you know you sort of take away the stuff that's been happening on the pitch Jeff yeah nine nil was was terrible um, but it's almost the things he said off the pitch that may be the reason why. If you keep the shorts, we're going to bring in Chris Temple shortly. But yeah, his off-pitch demeanour, not so great. 
Yeah, this is not about results on the pitch. There is there is no doubt in my mind that the nine nil would that, that would not get him sacked. Um, we all knew that we were going to lose those three games. The margin of defeat was was tough and unexpected, but um, we beat Villa. You know, we had three points on the board. We we were actually we were actually still above Everton and Leicester in the league, and they've still got their managers at the mm. moment. Um, yeah. So I think it's all to do with what's been happening or not been happening with transfers. I'm pretty sure that uh, it was miffed that the board wouldn't stump up for Nat Phillips earlier on in the transfer window. And I'm, I'm well, you, you don't need to be, you know, rocket scientist to figure out that he's unhappy with the level of, of what the club have been prepared to spend in the window. And um, I think what's the what's problematic about that is the way it translates to then the players and him telling them they're not good enough. And there was a feeling on Saturday, you were at the game, Tiggs and Sam, and you, you saw it as well as I did, that, that the, the players were sort of set up to fail in that game. And whose responsibility is that? Well, super Scotty Parker. Mm, yeah, we'll just get Chris Temple back very shortly. Hopefully, we get he's a uh, he's got a busy day today. He's he's at Lords of the cricket, so he's got to catch a tube shortly. So I'm not sure whether your two minute monologue that I wanted you to keep to ten seconds. Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay, mate. Don't you worry about that. We're going to get some uh, media insight throughout the morning. I'm, I'm absolutely certain. Um, so Tiggs, yeah, nine nil. I mean, that's embarrassing. But a manager that maybe communicates in a different way. So, for instance, who was it? Dundee United got spanked nine nil at the weekend to Celtic. Yeah. Their manager, Jack Ross, he he takes responsibility and. Yeah. He, he talks in a way whereby it's a learning curve. We made mistakes, but we need to... So, but Scott Parker's instantly not doing that. He doesn't do that. He seems to blame everyone else apart from himself. And it's a, it's a trend that we've seen whenever we lose. Whenever we win, he's happy to take the credit. It's almost self-preservation sometimes. And protecting his CV maybe going forward. That's what some people, including me, have perhaps suggested. But... He's been very quick to separate himself, make himself an island, make himself very isolated. You know, the board are over there doing their thing and the players are over there and Scott Parker's in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I think he kind of overinflates his own ego sometimes, personally, in terms of what he's, he thinks he can and can't do. Um, you judge a season upon the whole season and not just on individual individual games the, yeah, the 9 nil, like Jeff said like the 9 nil is not anywhere near the reason as to why he's he's being asked to to pack his bags and leave it's because he obviously cannot get on board with the vision of the football club that he has been hired to do that he would have been laid out very clearly to him mm. and we know that January we did a lot of late business very very quickly and maybe things changed in terms of what we were expecting from the season as a result of that. And it worked. We got promoted. Um, so there are a few questions. I'd, I'm trying to sort of trying to give a kind of balanced view. And maybe he didn't expect um, uh, the success and uh, the club didn't expect the success. And maybe he was then expecting the goalposts to change a little bit and they haven't. Um, but Mark McCadden, I heard uh, a little soundbite from him last night. And he was saying how, you know, the type of coach that Scott Parker is, is the type of coach that, he, you know, he wants players in now who are ready to perform now. He's not going to be like Eddie was, where you know you take it, you know, players from League One and you train them and you coach them until they're ready for the championship, and you coach them until they're you know they're ready for Premier League football, and you can put them in. He's he wants players who are ready now, and we're not going to put our hand in our pocket and and you know bring out that kind of money to be able to buy those kind of players. He didn't. He didn't really get the ethos. It seemed Jeff did he. No. Together, anything is possible. Look, we've we've got a very unique relationship, fans and the players. Because look, let's face it, we are a small club. Everyone in Bournemouth knows that we're, uh, we're not a small club. Uh, when you go onto Twitter, we get so much, uh, you know, abuse uh, because we're a small club. But in some ways, I, I find that quite a nice thing to actually have that banter. But he came in and he didn't exactly endear himself to the Bournemouth fans straight away but then what he did do was concentrate on the football and then for the first part in the championship we were very good he was relying on you know the academy players and so okay there's a difference right then he wasn't complaining about it because we were getting the results now he's complaining about it 
uh it it's just this kind of absolving of responsibility that that i never really did get but then we had that little blip during the middle of the championship season where fulham were pulling away and we were just hanging on in there we were in second but sometimes teetering down to third and towards the end of the season though he came into his own a little bit more and he got us promoted so you know that's a string to his bow in terms of his cv but like i said yesterday on yesterday's show we're a club that's We've got this kind of closeness with the club. We've always had adversity. Winter Gardens, minus 17, fighting off banks, creditors, relegation, fighting the odds with Eddie Howe. Everyone, the whole world had us down in 2015. We finished 16th. Following season, we finished ninth. (laughs) Yes, we had money. Yes, we did have money. Uh, But we also spent it wisely as well. Um, but whenever the chips were down with Eddie, we, you know, we lost many matches, like a number in a row. He never threw players under the bus. He never said players aren't good enough. He's been doing that this season, which to me, in training, what must they be feeling when the manager's basically, on the one hand, saying, I'm not trying to down the squad, but on that hand, they're not good enough. There was a feeling before the Villa game that he was building a siege mentality. Yeah. And... Tactically, that was quite cute and it worked because the players came out and performed really, really well. Um, however, I, I'm now thinking, looking back at that, maybe it wasn't really cute. Maybe that's just the way he is, you know, and, and the the honesty um, is is actually problematic in the last few games because the players' confidence looks shot. And certainly in the in the first half, the, there wasn't the team spirit after we went 3-0 down to, to hang in there and fight for each other. You know, the players pretty much gave up. And I think part of that is them thinking they're not good enough. And again, that's that's the coach's job, you know, to get the best out of what you've got. And I don't think he, he, his mindset was, was right for, for coaching us in those games. Interestingly, the bits that lots of people are pointing out in chat, I've put this on screen before, but we must also show belief in and respect for one another. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I can I can imagine, uh, you know, this is this is just me just imagining stuff in my head. So please don't anyone actually think I know anything. I can just imagine the conversation. I can imagine him saying to Demin, um, you know, I, I want more players. And Demin saying, I've put £160 million into this club. I now want this club to be able to do some stuff and we, we, we need to pay for a training ground and I'm asking you to develop young players that we can sell on. That's that's what, that's what our vision is at the moment. And if you can get them playing really well, we've got a good crack at, you know, trying to stay up this season. If we can be competitive, we can be clever in those in those moments. Um, and then Parker saying, well, I don't think I can do my job then if you're not going to give me the tools. And Demin just going, all right, then bye. Because, because at the end of the day, that you can't, and I know some people are sort of considering, you know, is Max and Demin doing the right thing? Hey, you can't fault that guy's commitment to this football club of when he puts not. his own money into it. You cannot. At the end of the day, he's, he never gets involved. He never sticks his nose in it. It's at that point where he feels he has to. So over the last few years, well, the last 10 years, how often has he really got involved in, in kind of the football club's running? Very, very little. Very, very little. Obviously, he had to be involved when Eddie wanted to go and he had to get involved when, when uh, Jason left. But... Really, he's been very hands off. He, he gives people what they think, you know, what they ask for. They make an agreement, and Parker wanted more than they agreed. Mm. So, you know, what else could he do? What else could he do? Okay, so if you're wanting some reaction to this, you can read it in the Daily Echo. And the man with the wise words is Jack Tanner from Ball with Echo. Jack, how are you? I'm, I'm fine. <clears throat> Sorry for my dishevelled look. Uh, I literally saw the news as I was about to have a shower and I haven't <laughs> had a chance yet. So I've been a little bit busy. Um, yeah. My inside almost. Yeah. Something that you just didn't have any clue about. I mean, I, like the relationship seems to not be overly great. That's, this is us just reading between the lines. We don't know that what they put out is the same as what's happening behind the scenes, but it's now happened. So it's clear that yeah, there were some problems. Yeah, it reminded me, Parker's comments kind of throughout the summer reminded me of how it ended at Fulham. He was, he was very similar in his kind of dialogue about the board, and that, that was more that he was unhappy of being a yo-yo club. But 
with Fulham, they were still happy to keep him. They didn't sack him. He left on his own accord. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think maybe there's a, there's a degree of at his last club, he those comments worked. So he's trying his luck again here. Um, but as you say, there's been discontent and there's a feeling that maybe further down the line something like this would happen. But for mm-hmm. them to kind of pull the trigger now is a bit of a, a bit of a surprise. But uh, as you say, he's kind of been sniping um, throughout the window. Uh, really, I, I kind of understand his frustration, but at the same time, the club have wanted Parker for some time as a manager. Mm. They've always had him on their lists, so it seems to be very odd and very unlikely that he was told anything different. Uh, it seems like they would have had a plan when they hired him; he would be made aware of that plan. So, as I kind of heard you guys discussing, maybe he thought that the the time frame of promotion into the Premier League had sped up, and thus the plan had to change. Mm. But um, promotion was always the aim from day one when he came in. So I'm not sure how much he can kind of hang his hat on that. So, yeah, surprised, but not awfully surprised. Just just the timing of it, I think, is the main thing that sticks out. Well, we were meant to be having a press conference with him today. Um, I don't know if that's happening now. So. Oh, I don't think yeah. it's going to be him. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Yeah, we recorded our match preview yesterday, which has completely gone out the window. <laughs> Another excuse to go back to the pair. Um, J- J- Jeff, I, there was a tweet that we wrote we, where we said, you know, Parker, miscommunication or uh, mischief making. And mm. some of his comments, look, he was moaning about the lack of signings, lack of new blood uh not so long ago and then a few days later we signed Marcus Sanessi for what 15 million euros or whatever he was and it's almost like you know Parker got his way um but then there also seems to be this clear kind of divide with regards to what the signings were signed for like in January so out of all the signings that we made then only Kiefer Moore's actually uh, you know, largely been involved so far. Uh, yeah. w- were they longevity in the championship? Should we go down or to compete in the Premier League? It seems like Scott I, now wants more for Premier League. I thought that dialogue around uh, Dembele going to the sick test was really interesting last week because there was a surprise from us because as fans, we felt they had potential and could definitely perform at this level. And then you you kind of hear Parker saying that he bought players to get us up from the championship, but that didn't mean that they were good enough for the Premier League. That's what he said, really, and I paraphrase it, but you think, well, hang on a minute, you know, part of your job as coach is to get players who were performers in the championship level and improve them to be competitive at the Premier League level because a lot of players are looking at us as a club that's going to offer them that opportunity they're a stepping stone. Their motivation is important. Why they join the club. Dembele would have joined us because he thought we were going to get promoted and have a chance of playing in the Premier League and he could show what he could do at the Premier League level. Parker's basically saying, everyone I bought in that window, you were basically just to get us up and actually your surplus to requirements now is not going to go down well in the dressing room, is it? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think for, for AFC Bournemouth, our, our aim is to get a really, really good coach in. And I think we thought that's what we were getting with Scott Parker, someone who was going to take players, as Jeff said, improve them and, you know, make sure that we can kick on from there. And if we go down, but we've had a, you know, a good fist of it and we've got some good players that have proven themselves in games at the Premier League, then we've got essentially money in the bank, haven't we? And I, I think, you know, the, the two do come, you know, entwine. What we're not likely to do is we never really wanted the kind of person who we're going to get in, uh, who are going to keep us up because we throw a load of money at them. It's, it's just, it's just not, it's not sensible. <clears> hmm. <throat> What's this um, Steve Cook tweet that we saw Tiggs earlier on? Uh, there, there, there was some tweet about him with a, referring to his testimonial. Is that right? Oh, let me have a look. I think, yeah, like we'll have to have a look at his Twitter feed, but there's been a lot of reaction. We're going to gauge it very, very shortly by taking a look at uh, some of the tweets. But whilst you look that up, uh, we'll have to have a look at exactly what he says. Uh, it may have been deleted. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Uh, but yeah, uh, so look, Jeff, Wednesday, there's a huge match. All of our preparations, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know whether we're going five at the back or four at the back for that one. Seemingly, he thought it was good to go four at the back when we all thought five against Liverpool, but never mind. Wow. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, uh, where do we go from here? We've got 
two massive games. Wolves, who haven't won for 11 Premier League games. Wow. And they're playing us on game 12. So they are a team that we've got to look at as, as one we've got to get points off. And then Forest away, which is going to be, again, a massive game that you look at and you think, start of the season, got to get points from that, at least one. Here we are with two days left in a transfer window where we all think that we're bereft of a centre-half still. You know, Sanasi is not the solution that I thought we all thought he might be. Um, certainly not at the moment. Uh, is any player going to sign for us with two days left in the transfer window? How important is that Wolves game? I mean, it's it's, it's like the, these are season-defining 48 hours we've got ahead of us. And... It doesn't matter who the coach is. If, if they if things start going pear shaped in the next few games, uh, yeah. we could be in real trouble. But the club's got a season mentality, Jack. So these next two games, yeah, they could be pivotal. I mean, if we manage to get a win against Wolves, wow, that would be absolutely huge, wouldn't it? Sorry, <coughs> was that my mind that I was just checking. Yeah, no problem. No worries. <laughs> just saying, Jack, that we've got a real. We need to, the club really need to come come together now. And uh, have a real kind of siege mentality going into these these next few games. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we were expecting at the start of the season, especially when we went to straight the back getting against Villa. It was very much a siege mentality, almost in the way they played in like, defensively. Um, Chris Meppham, Lloyd Kelly, I think, led the Premier League for, um, with blocks just from that game. That they still do just because of the amount of blocks they made. Uh, but yeah, as you say, I think that's all the, those players can do. And to be fair, on Saturday, I had the um, tough ask of standing in the mix zone trying to speak to the players. And whilst they definitely seemed downbeat and obviously upset by the result, there was a solidarity. Um, only Ryan Christie stopped to speak to him in fair play. Um, but it did seem that whilst the mood was low, there was a unity in that dressing room. Scott Parker leaving... Not sure how much that changes. Maybe it'll be a case of a few players on the fringes feel a, a bit better. Um, they've got a chance again. Um, interesting to see because at the moment I think the transfers must be um, almost deadlocked in the sense that there's, there's 25 players. If you bring in a player now, someone has to go. Um, and if you can't find clubs for those players, then really I think financially. That's the main issue. I don't think the club's going to have players on the books that they're paying that can't play. That goes against being sustainable, certainly. Um, but I do think that siege mentality, really, this season can be beneficial because you only really have to get to November in touching distance of the, of the pack. Um, if you get enough points before the World Cup, you can almost reset and have a, a mini pre-season again. Um, so anyone coming in and even these next few games, if you keep within touching distance of other teams, you have until the World Cup effectively for a manager, an incoming manager to get a proper grip of things, I think. I think you're right, Jack. And I think that's the point at which last season, that January transfer window, so just after that, that World Cup will be, is is when we the club will make a decision as to whether to stick or twist, to whether to put some more money in or to whether to say, OK, you know, we're going to have to try and make do as we are depending on the likelihood of, of Premier League survival. So I think you're yeah, you're spot on there. That must be really hard talking to the players, though, or, or trying to talk talk around the players. Yeah. Um, like, I, I've never done a mix zone before this year. Um, so the, the Villa one, everyone stopped, as you can imagine, because it's kind of novel, kind of new. Um, mm. And then, to be fair, players stopped around City, quite a few did. Um and then at Arsenal, we kind of stopped off. But at Liverpool, it's difficult in the sense that uh, you kind of got a job to do. Um, and the, play the players don't have to stop. All they have to do is walk through that mix zone. Of course, people are different. Uh, people, even if they won 9-0, won like the Liverpool players didn't stop. Um, it's completely down to them. And you know, I did kind of feel a bit bad, um, kind of intruding, because, yeah, I can't imagine. I've lost 9-0 in my time as a goalkeeper playing like Sunday League. I didn't want to speak to anyone. Um, no. I didn't have a load of cameras pointed at me. So, yeah, it, it's difficult, but I, I like it because it gives you like an insight to how, how the mood is. And whilst, like I said, there was definitely a disappointment there, um, there did seem to be a togetherness in the sense that players were coming out together, talking, 
Um, it wasn't just total despondency, uh, which you kind of got the vibe from Parker. Um, that's kind of what people said afterwards. It was depressing, despondent. Um, I wasn't in the press conference just because I was in the mix zone. But um, I think, yeah, p- players are pretty good. They kind of know what they're expecting this season. Um, like Ryan Christie kind of said that three points in the four games is decent. It, it's not the end of the world. Yes, the performances, the results, the goal difference, not fantastic. Um, but they're very much a case of this is a low point and it can only get better. Um mm. Now that's kind of, well, everything's up in the air at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jack, you know, I expect you got loads of words to be writing, so we won't keep you. But thanks so much. And we'll be anticipating this press conference, whether it happens, who it happens with. And uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. Lovely. Nice Thank one. you for having me, guys. Um, just before uh, Jeff, media mogul, what's going on for you this morning? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. just better do an interview with Solent and then Meridian have just rung. So, yeah, it's like uh, it's a crazy day for us back of the net podcasters today. One thing I would just like to clarify, um, Alan, Cal- Alan Gard called me out for saying that uh, Sanese is not rubbish. I don't think Sanese is rubbish. I think just that is what Parker probably felt after the, that first game. And I think he's probably he probably said to the board, you know, Sanese is not the solution because he's not prepared to work with him. And I, I actually think Sanese probably will come good in time. But at the moment, we are just bereft of centre-halves. And I don't think Parker thought that Sanese was the solution. Mm. All right, Jeff, good luck with your media responsibilities this morning, mate. Yeah, look forward to seeing you on telly tonight, Sam. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, mate. So, yeah, I'll uh, see what's going to go on with that. Right, uh, let's just recap on the news then and on afcb.co.uk and across the socials the club has parted company with head coach scott parker maxim demin said i'd like to place on record my gratitude to scott and his team for their efforts during their time with us a promotion back to the premier league last season and his tenure will always be remembered as one of the most successful seasons in our history however in order for the club to keep us keep progressing as a team and a club as a whole it's unconditional that we are lined we are aligned in our strategy to run the club sustainably to me that says that they want to run it sustainably and scott doesn't that's just that's just how it looks to me we must also show belief in and respect for one another which makes it sound like they've been disrespected that is the approach that has brought this club so much success in recent history agreed and one that we will not veer from now our search for a new head coach will begin immediately wow so uh, you know what Tiggs do you remember when he left Fulham yeah and the statement from the owner then or the chairman was laced with these little messages and it's happened again it has happened again and uh, you know and anyone in football and you know Fulham and Bournemouth fans are going to take more notice of it than a lot of other people but anyone in football now now Scott's going to start being tagged with a certain reputation and you know there's no way away away from that um i think the thing is that it's really interesting isn't it from the outside looking in you know the majority of com- a lot of comments that we're getting a lot of things you're seeing on social media is why did you sack him why is he gone that doesn't seem fair you know you played against man city arsenal um and liverpool I, but I, it's not about that it's it's these we all think here back in the net that this is not the reason that he's been fired he's been fired if you read that statement because uh, he's not in line with the club's vision and he's been disrespectful potentially in terms of him speaking to the media to make it sound like he's been dealt a shorthand. Now, you can't do that in any job, can you? You can't. You can't. I mean, no one's going to come outside of, you know, of where people work and interview them if, you know, if you work in a factory or whatever. But at the end of the day, you can't start throwing your bosses under the bus. Uh, and you can't agree to a contract, go into an agreement with somebody and then turn around and go, oh, this is not really what I want. And that's what it feels like Scott Parker's done. This is not really what I want. Uh, I want something different to what you're offering me. So I'm going to tell everyone in the world that I want money. And uh, if you don't give it to me, then you're going to look like the bad guys. So, yeah, Demin's done what Demin does. And, you know, he's he's proven in the past he has to be ruthless when he has to be ruthless. Thank you. Ben Phillips is here. Ben, you all right, mate? I'm, I'm OK. I'm all right. Go on, uh, talk to me then. Uh, were you a were you ever a lover of Scott Parker? I was always kind of on the fence about him, to be honest. Um, my my 
reaction this morning was, why have we done that? Because we're four games in. But I think as as time's gone on, um, it's kind of it's sunk in a bit and I've thought about it. And, um, you know, on paper, we beat Villa, which is all right. And then we obviously lost the three three games after, which I expected us to do. But it was the manner that um, that we lost, you know, out of the games completely by 20 minutes, you know, if we're including the City game. Um, and I think, I think Tom mentioned this on Twitter as well, that it's not the performance or the results that were the issue. It's just purely him almost going in with a defeatist attitude and um, not not really having any faith in our in our team, which I think if, you, if, if you're like that and you're a manager, then like, the, I, I don't I don't see the point in being a manager if it looks like you don't have faith in your own team. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, Harry's here as well. Harry, how you doing, mate? Hi, how's it going? Yeah, very mm. good. Your audio is loud and clear, which is great. Um, what were your immediate reactions when you saw that this morning? A little bit surprised, but not overly. I had actually said to my mates on the way back from the Liverpool game that there seemed to be a little bit of a an atmosphere at the club with Parker's constant uh, berating of the squad or, or the board. And it just seems a bit sort of naive from him. He can't have expected coming in that we were going to spend the money. I know we've all liked to slag Forrest off, but they are a much bigger club than us. And that's just a fact. They are able to spend money in ways that we are not. So either Scott Parker was kind of naive thinking that he would get that support in the sort of two to hundreds of millions, or I guess stupid to take the job knowing that that would not come and that was what he wanted. Um, it just seems seemed sort of untenable, I guess, from this point forward. But the timing, I, I think a few people have said now, two days before the end of the, the transfer window, we brought in some players that clearly he wanted and now he's not going to work with. So, yeah, the timing is is a little bit worrying, I guess. Hmm. Tiggs, the way he communicated, it was it was clear when, you know, people were putting up these videos with you know, backing tracks to the streets that he was always the person who sort of um, spoke with his heart on his sleeve. And sometimes he's very loose tongued and even he's had to semi apologize for it as well. Whilst he's been at Bournemouth by saying he's he's sort of it didn't mean to come across like that, effectively saying that um, he is just one of these kind of emotional managers, even though he tells the players not to have an emotional game. Sometimes he himself is a bit emotional. I just wish he could maybe um, you know dish the same medicine out to himself as he does his players. But yeah, within you within that, you sort of wonder then, you know, there must have been miscommunications. There must have been miscommunications in terms of what he wants what the uh, what the board are willing to provide and maybe a lack of seeing a bigger picture which maybe reinforces what cherry's fans thought originally that he was going to use the club as almost like a stepping stone to further his career because he's not really worried about the training ground he's not really worried about what happens four or five years down the line he he's just worried about the here and now and when when he can't get the money he needs and the players he needs he sort of kicks his toys out the pram it's a we sort of need someone to understand a little bit more. And that's maybe one thing that he didn't. Yeah, completely. And he must have been warned. Like, it's not like this is the first time after the Liverpool game that he's spoken to the media and and essentially said that, you know, our players aren't good enough and oh, we need a little bit more help now. Um, that's fine. But like, this is, he would have had, when he came in, when he joined us, he would have been told very clearly what what the future of this football club is. For him to decide to publicly go to the media this is what it feels like to me public go to the media and try and get something different from our owners to what he'd already agreed with our owners is the reason he's gone it's nothing to do with the results still seeing people saying oh you know come on you've played the top top three clubs it's nothing to do with that at all i don't think um although the results weren't great and the nine nil was particularly bad it's not that it's about his um a, um, ability to go along with what he'd agreed to do. He must have agreed to do when he came into the football club. And now he's decided that he wants to publicly say that this is not going to work. He doesn't want to be. So fine, leave then. You know, you can go because we, we don't want somebody who's just going to moan and moan week in, week out because the owner 
has put a lot of money into this football club in previous years. He's not going to go and do it again. Scott Parker's not going to get a hundred million pounds to go out and spend on players, 70 million pounds spend on players. Yeah, we get money from the Premier League, 150 million or whatever it is. But, you know, he, that money is ring fenced, some of that, for the future of this football club. Because when we were in the Premier League last time, we used that money mainly to, to stay up under Eddie. And, and now we want to use some of that money to actually have a future for this football club. Because we remember the days when we were down in League Two and we were, you know, insolvent. We don't want to go back there. And, we, you know, and Premier League won't be forever. But we need to make sure that we've got something to hold on to. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's really interesting seeing some of these chats coming through. There, there's a mixture of relief there at this stage. And even Amy Brown just popped on. Hi, AD. I've, I've seen your WhatsApp, but my um, my phone's doing an auto update, mate. So I can't actually read it. But I can see your message here. I'm not surprised. It saves reputation if he wants to live off the I wasn't back yeah. narrative, which he's been peddling for the last few weeks. Surely, Ben, you know, other clubs will be seeing this narrative and then thinking twice about employing him. Because like Tom said on the second look, he... He's not going to go to a bigger club, maybe bigger in size, fan base and stuff, but not a Premier League club, no way. No, I, I don't think he will. And I think people have mentioned this before about him almost kind of doing this at Fulham as well. Uh, a similar thing about them being like a yo-yo club or however you want to call it. Um, but I don't, I, I'm still very mixed about, about it all, to be fair, because I... I was never a real fan of his tactics. I'll put it out there, even in the championship. Obviously, I saw the speech against Forrest at half time. I thought that was quite good. And I thought that really meant that he was attached to the club and that he had faith in these players. And as he said, he said something like the front five in my team is lethal, something like that. Mm. And then after we've equaled the Premier League's biggest ever loss, he's almost completely turned on that mm. and has basically just said that we're not we're not good enough and there's plenty more lows to come so some, something like that he said in his interview which yeah I think clubs won't be inspired by that if a manager is there literally saying and literally saying that, that they're not going to do well in future games because I think if you go in with a defeatist mentality it is it's just it's not good and it's it's pointless mm. Yeah, Tom O'Donnell just said, uh, if you can't see why Parker was sacked, I assume you're not much of a fan. Clear to anyone who follows the club why he's gone. Isn't it Isn't it mad, Harry, that, uh, you know, a manager that... Full, I mean, look, I can see why he's gone. I can, I can completely see. But when you, when you look at the cold, hard facts, which is what Scott Parker will be writing down on his CV, <laughs> he, he came to a club... He had to use the lads from the academy. He went on a ridiculous unbeaten run of like 14 games or whatever. I think we were still in November or something and we still hadn't lost. We don't lose, all that kind of stuff. Yes, it went a bit wrong, but it got us promoted. We finished very close to runaway leaders Fulham. We finished eight points above Forest. Okay, we're in the Premier League. Start of the season, no one expects us to beat Villa. We beat them. And everyone expects us to lose against Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool. That's what happened. And now he's gone. When you look at the cold, hard facts, it's like, what? However, we know a bit more than that. And there's obviously stuff that's going on behind the scenes, um, which which kind of, if there is stuff going on behind the scenes, it makes me think, my God, the mentality of our group of players to um, to get that win against Villa, to make sure we got over the line last season. We don't know how long this has been going on for. It's um, It's a bizarre situation, isn't it, Harry? It's very bizarre, but I think if you compare him to Eddie Howe, and obviously I know Eddie Howe is, we're probably never going to get a better manager than Eddie Howe ever, but when you look at the players that he brought through from League One, the players that started on the opening day against Villa, and I even think you guys mentioned on one of the podcasts about the team that he started at uh, City yeah. with Federici, Glenn Murray, etc. I remember that, I think it was 5-1 the game, Glenn Murray squad. But you never heard Eddie Howe coming out and moaning, either against the players publicly against the board publicly. I'm sure in private, all of these discussions went on. And I feel like that is where these discussions should have happened. And as you say, it's not the results that have got him sacked. I was, ne I think Ben said a minute ago, I was never sold really on Scott Parker tactically. Mm. The first 15, 16 games were great, but it seemed like once teams worked us out, there was no plan B. And if plan A didn't work, 
then it was either a draw or a loss. Some of the games towards the end of the season, I think some of the performances were really quite poor. But as you say, I think it's definitely all the stuff that's gone on in, in the background that has gotten the sack. And I don't actually mind the board sort of taking the decision. It, it may seem a bit premature. And certainly on the outside, a lot of, a lot of other fans and pundits are saying that it seems very premature because of who we played at the start of the season. But if there were some you know some bad feelings in the background maybe between the players if he's lost the dressing room or if it's just between him and the boards I don't necessarily mind the decision if we can bring someone in who who understands where we are as a club in terms of needing to invest in the training ground and the facilities and the academy etc to try and bring us up to a level to compete in the future without needing these constant uh, parachute payments so one one thing I will say people are already kind of thinking about what happens next um and harry you're right like outside the, the view that people have got from outside is why that why they you know we've said it already why are they doing this why would they sack him and we know that it's an internal thing it's not because of results or anything but the people kind of looking at different managers that could possibly come in and i'm sure it's something we'll kind of look at deeper later on down the line um but i what i do kind of hope just a very quick note on that is what i do kind of hope is that when we got scott parker in he was we had a name you know we wanted him that's what we wanted um, prior to Scott Parker, we didn't really have much of a shortlist of managers when Eddie left. We, you know, we <laughs> felt like we were just like, oh, uh, didn't expect that to happen. Uh, so what I really hope is that n with the previous experiences in mind that we've actually got a little shortlist of people that we might look at. And I'm guessing we're looking at a coach more than a manager. We're looking at someone who can improve the players that we've got, improve the players that we buy in the future, improve our players that come through our youth uh, system rather than somebody who's necessarily going to long ball it keeps up in the Premier League yeah completely agree with that uh, Harry thanks for coming on really appreciate it mate thank you so much cheers guys thank you and uh, Ben Phillips as well uh, our our chats in the car on the way to Forest Away are going to be very different now aren't they yeah there's going to there's going to be a lot to speak about which is a good thing because I think there's a few managers that we I, in my eyes, I would like to see us maybe go for that have different tactics to Parker. But yeah, it's, it's, it will be uh, an eventful week, uh, mm. to say the least. Yeah. God, mad, mad. Ben, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Right. So there have been a few audio issues, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to just like absolve all responsibility of that. So I, I'm, I'm not responsible for the bad audio. Uh, Tiggs, you had a terrible performance, but you're also a really valued member of my team. Yeah. I'm going all Scott Parker out, but you know, um, if you're new to the channel and you're watching this, we're an AFC Bournemouth fan channel called back of the net. And we do match day vlogs for every single game. And we're going to be re reacting more, including a preview this afternoon. That's going to be released for the Wolves game that will take into account this news that Parker has left the club. We would truly appreciate it as a diddy little fan channel um, to, if you could hit the like button, that would truly appreciate that, but also subscribe as well because we'll feed you AFC Bournemouth and Premier League content. It sounds like it's going to be a tumultuous season, Tiggs. If we manage yeah. to pull through this, wow. We have, we don't have many quiet seasons, do we? This, <laughs> we're very lucky in that respect in terms of kind of entertainment, although it'd be better if the entertainment was on the pitch rather than off of it. Just want to do a little bit of role play with you, Sam. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, well, you have you have got your nurse outfit on though. What's going on? <laughs> I have it's just under this. Um, right, uh, right yeah. Sam. Yeah. Uh, I'm disappointed that um, I, I, what I would like is I would like a better microphone and better headphones, please. Uh, okay, but uh, hang on. I I about six months ago I I got you some headphones and a new microphone and yeah. Uh, that, you know, that was all right, wasn't it? No, but those microphone and headphones were only to get me like to this point now. But now the channel's getting more successful. I want a better headphones and microphones. And I know you've got some money somewhere. You must have some money somewhere. You've got to have some. But we're building a, a new studio about five miles down the road, mate. And like, yeah, but that's not, not. No, but that doesn't look good on me, does it? Now I want a good. So people are watching Tigs. Tig, they want to hear Tigs. They want to see Tigs really, really well. So you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do this. Now, or I, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to carry on telling the media how bad you are as a boss for not giving me stuff that I need. 
I can't, I can't, I just can't, there's just these fine margins, mate, and we're just not reaching them. At this moment in time, we're going to need a little bit more help. I don't appreciate you saying these things publicly, though, unfortunately, because, you know, we should, we could have had these, with these, how long are we, get, how long are we going on with this for? But, you know, <laughs> I think you can fire me now. Yeah, yeah, you're gone. But that's effectively what it is, isn't it? That's effectively yeah, what it is it. effectively what it is, yeah. Um, yeah, interesting day. Look, um, if you hit the subscribe button later on, a new video will drop with uh, Tom Jordan and myself uh, chewing the fat over this. And look, uh, he's trying to trying to bring in all of the thoughts that we're uh, we've got on our heads, but also gauging some of your reaction on Twitter as well, and previewing the Wolves game at the same time. Is it possible? Of course <laughs> it is, because this is back there. Um, Tiggs, thank you, mate. Thank you, buddy. And thank you, everyone that's got involved again. Uh, yeah, really appreciate all your support. And there's going to be a hell of a lot of fallout, I'm absolutely certain, over the next days and weeks. So keep it locked on Back of the Net, and we'll see you in the next one. Have the cherries.